The title of my talk is the modulation of the host immune response by helicobacter pylori neutrophil activating protein and its possible application in therapy. Helicobacter pylori colonizes the gastric mucosa of more than half of the human population and uh, it is responsible for the development of several gastrodudinal diseases such as chronic active gastritis, peptic ulcer, gastric cancer and gastric lymphoma. And such diseases develop over decades. H. pylori colonization is typically followed by infiltration of the gastric mucosa by polymorphonuclear cells, macrophages and lymphocytes and the recruitment of these cells from the blood is part of a, a more complex process called inflammation. A strong correlation exists between gastric infiltration by leukocytes and mucosal damage in H. pylori infection. In this cartoon, I would like to show you, um, I mean, some uh, uh, details about uh, uh, inflammation. When you have a bacterium in a tissue, it is capable uh, by itself to activate the endothelium, but also it can activate macrophages to release messengers. The result is the activation of endothelium. In which term? The endothelium beca become more uh, capable of attached leukocytes in the blood, but also it increases its permeability in order to permit the flux from the blood to the tissue of fluids and protein. But the adhesiveness of endothelium, which increases during the inflammation process, is responsible for the recruitment of the cells, which is a part, crucial part of the inflammation process. During this process, the first cells which uh, goes out, which go out from the blood, are neutrophils, and the second one are monocytes. This process of obviously occurs also during the uh, inflammation, during the infection uh, sustained by Helicobacter pylori. However, the mechanism underlying the sustained recruitment of leukocytes in, in H. pylori infected patients remained elusive. H. pylori produces several factors such as VACA, such as CAGA, but also a particular protein called HPNAP. And we decided to focus our attention on this protein in order to understand whether this could be involved in the inflammation triggered by H. pylori. HPNAP. HPNAP is a dodecameric protein of 150 kilodalton and it is called HPNAP, which uh, means Helicobacter pylori neutrophil activating protein, because of its ability to induce neutrophils to produce reactive oxygen radicals. Also, it has been demonstrated before our study that it promotes neutrophil adhesion to endothelial cells in vitro. By this, but this study did not consider the underflow condition, which is extremely important in vivo. So together with a group of Professor Tedesco here in Trieste, in particular with the um, uh, uh, help of uh, Fleur Bossi, the essential help of, of Fleur Bossi, we try to understand whether HPNAP could have a, really a role in recruitment of the cells in vivo. And to this purpose, we perform the following experiment. We label leukocytes of rat with acridine orange in order, in order to follow them as fluorescent spots. Then we expose mesenteric vessels and we apply topically HPNAP. And as you can see here, already after 10 minutes, HPNAP stimulate, promote the adhesion of leukocytes on the endothelium. And this is more visible after 30 minutes and even more after 16 minutes. And when we increase the concentration to 5 micromolar, not only there was a clear adhesion, but after 16 minutes, there was also a strong <coughs> extravasation. On the basis of this, results, we ask whether, how does HPNAP induce leukocyte adhesion and extravasation? We considered two possibilities. The first one, after crossing endothelium, it directly stimulates leukocytes to adhere. Second, 
it stimulates macrophages of the tissue to release chemokines. In order to address these two possibilities, we adopt the following simple experimental setup, again together with Fleur uh, Bossi. We use the transwell system, a system which permits to divide a well in two chambers, the apical one and the basal one. A on the filter, we can seed uh, endothelial cells and wait until they grow um, as monolayer. When the monolayer is formed and cells are uh, correctly polarized, we can apply HPNAP in the basal chamber. And what we did, we evaluated after different time points the presence of HPNAP inside the endothelium, but also we evaluated whether HPNAP was released in a soluble form in the apical chamber. What we observe is reported here. HPNAP is rapidly internalized by endothelial cells, as you can see here, and the intensity of fluoresces increases with the time. But, more interestingly, not only we found that HPNAP is released in the lumen in a soluble form, but it also remains bound to the apical surface of the endothelium. And this proportion of HPNAP, which remains on the endothelium, is responsible, is capable of inducing the adhesion of leukocytes, as you can appreciate here from the flattened uh, morphology of the cells. Moreover, we were also able to demonstrate that HPNAP stimulates macrophages and neutrophils to release chemokines such as 6CL8 and CCL4, which are known to contribute to, sustaining, to sustain the inflammation. Therefore, coming back to the question, to the possibility that we consider, the response, the answer is both. HPNAP induced leukocyte adhesion and extravasation, both after crossing endothelium and directly stimulating leukocyte to adhere, but also by stimulating macrophages of the tissue and recruited cells to release chemokine. Just can, can I ask you just a question? So does it mean that you don't get soluble HPNAP in the... In the you apical? get it. You do? Yeah, but, yeah but we uh, focus our attention on the bound form because you have to consider that in underflow condition the soluble form is diluted in the blood. So the important, uh, um, a similar thing occurred for uh, uh, IL-8, also it remains bound on the oh, surface. Yeah. And we demonstrated that in this form, HPNAP uh, uh, trigger an increase of uh, affinity of integrin on the leukocyte. And this is the uh, end point responsible for the adhesion and the extravasation. Therefore, just to summarize the, this first part of the talk, HPNAP is released in the gastric lumen, then it is transported through the gastric epithelial cells, and this is a, um, a result that we uh, obtained several years ago. Once in the tissue, it can be transcytosed through the, through the endothelium monolay endothelial monolayer, and once in the luminal side of the, uh, of the endothelium, it becomes in contact with uh, leukocytes and uh, activating, promoting an increase of affinity of integrin, it is responsible for the adhesion of the cells before their extravasation. But once the cells are here, HPNAP can again more stimulate these cells to release chemokines, which prolong, which continue the recruitment of cells from the blood. After this part of the study, we wonder whether HPNAP had any effect on the adaptive immune response also. What I mean? But before going into detail, I just want to give you some uh, detail in order to understand the second part of my talk. Until now, we saw macrophages, which are crucial in the first phase of inflammation, but I did not say anything about dendritic cells. These cells are similar to macrophages I mean, they are capable of uh, phagocyting, but they are special because they are also able to present the antigen to the T lymphocytes, which 
belong to the so-called adaptive immunity. Dendritic cells present to helper cells or CD4 T cells, but also it can contribute to the activation, it can activate the so-called killer T cells or CD8 T cells. What is the function uh, of these different type of uh, uh, lymphocytes? Helper T cells <coughs> include at least two subtypes of T helper cells, the so-called Th1 and the other one Th2. Th1 cells activated macrophages to become more aggressive, whereas Th2 cells activate B cells to release antibodies. The cytotoxic T cells or killer T cells are crucial in fighting tumor, in killer cancer cells, but also in killing uh, virus infected cells. This image just to show you the tight contact between the dendritic cells and lymphocytes. But I just want to, 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 to give you another important information. Dendritic cells can activate lymphocytes not only because they form a tight uh, immunological synapsis, but also they can bias the differentiation of the activating T cells through the release of messengers, again cytokines. Indeed, this special kind of cells, which belong to the innate immunity, dendritic cells, can sense the environment. They can sense the presence of bacteria. And in virtue of the specific bacterium, they respond by releasing different type of messenger, different type of cytokines. And in virtue of the type of cytokines they release, they can bias the differentiation of <coughs> proliferating T cells towards a specific phenotype, such as Th1 or Th2. Th1 cells, as I just said, produce a particular cytokine, which is a hallmark of this kind of subset, and it is interferon gamma. And these cells are crucial in uh, the clearance of bacteria, especially intracellular bacteria, but they are also crucial for, the, um, for killing cancer cells because of their contribution to the activity of uh, killing cells, CD8 T cells. The other subset of Th2 cells is Th2 cells and the differentiation of this type of cells does not require interleukin-12 but other cytokines. These cells are involved in different physiological or pathological conditions such as allergy and intestinal worm cleaning, clearance. So, coming back to H. pylori. The starting point of, uh, of our study um, was based on the evidence that the gastric mucosa of H. pylori infected patients was particularly enriched in the typical Th1 cytokines. Indeed, you can see here a strong interferon gamma production, but also a significant presence of the messengers encoding for the two subunits forming the major form of interleukin-12. And I just want to remind you that interleukin-12 is the cytokine crucial for the differentiation of T cells towards the Th1 phenotype. Therefore, we try to verify whether HPNAP could contribute to create an environment enriched in interleukin-12. To, to this aim, we exposed neutrophil and monocytes to HPNAP, and as you can see here, we observed not only an increase in the messenger RNA encoding for the two subunits, but also a time-dependent accumulation of the major cytokine in the culture supernatant. And interestingly, when we evaluated the role of HPNAP in the whole bacterium, we got the following results. 
We compared the capability of a wild-type strain, a live bacteria, wild-type strain of H. pylori, with that of a knockout of H. pinap strain, in the capability of promoting the release of interleukin-12 by monocytes, the same experiment. And what we observed was that the deletion of HPNAP totally abrogated the capability of the bacterium in promoting the release of interleukin-12. Therefore, H. pylori is able to, to trigger the release of interleukin-12, and the major factor responsible for that is HPNAP. But can I because can you go back? This uh, <coughs> loss of effect in the knockout is equally seen with uh, neutrophils and monocytes? Yes. We, we verify only with monocytes and dendritic cells. We did not try to use uh, uh, neutrophils. But I think so, because uh, the receptor is the same, so I think so. Mm. So with these results, uh, we can just conclude that HPNAP is able to uh, create, to contribute to the creation of an interleukin-12 and reach the milieu. But is this amount of cytokines really capable of uh, influencing the differentiation of Th1 cells? In order to address this point, we performed the following experiment. We isolated T cells from allergic donor because these cells in an allergic donor are enriched in the Th2 subset. We put in culture these cells from the allergic donor with the specific allergen as a mitogen in the presence of medium, HPNAP, or interleukin-12 as positive control. And what we observed was, as expected in the control, negative control, the major proportion of T cells belong to Th2, but when we added in the medium HPNAP, we observe a significant drop down of the Th2 population in favor of an increase of the Th1. Obviously, the same result or similar was obtained with interleukin-12. Similarly, we obtained the, the same results when we used T cells isolated from tetanus toxoid uh, vaccinated subjects. In this case, there is a more equilibrium be among the three kinds of uh, uh, TH cells, but also in this case, when we administrated HPNAP to our uh, cultures, we observed an increase of the TH1 population. Therefore, to uh, uh, implement the cartoon that I showed you before, not only HPNAP contribute by itself and uh, by acting on the recruited cells in uh, promoting and sustaining inflammations, but it can also drive the differentiation of recruited T cells towards the Th1 phenotype, which is the most um, represented subtype in the uh, mucosa of HP-infected patients. On the basis of this data, we were interested to investigate that in virtue of its activity, HPNAP could inhibit the H2 allergic response. Allergy is a problem which um, uh, is a worldwide problem. Indeed, you can see here some data from a, a survey in the 2007. It was estimated that 25% of the people may suffer from some form of allergic disease. What about the approach, the medical approach? There are several uh, approaches. Um, Many of them include uh, uh, pharmacological approach, uh, which are symptomatic approach, such as antihistaminic. But there is also uh, the vaccination against allergy, but frequently it fails. Therefore, we try to verify whether, on the basis of the immunomodulant activity, HPNAP could be considered as a possible therapeutic tool for allergy. To address this possibility, we adopted the following experimental setup together with the group of Professor Bertone in Verona. Let me just briefly explain the basal protocol and then I will go into detail um, 
about the HPNAP administration. This protocol includes a first phase of sensitization in which the allergen of albumin is given intraperitoneally. After eight days, the animals are challenged with ovalbumin by aerosols, and then we make other four challenges with ovalbumin uh, by aerosol. At the end of the experiment, what uh, typically occurs is the accumulation of eosinophils in the lung parenchyma, but also an increase of the IgE level in the blood and also an increase of the typical DH2 cytokine such as interleukin-4 and 5 in the bronchoalveolar lavage. Therefore, on the basis of these all marks which are typically related to the allergy, we decided to apply HPNAP. The first protocol we adopted um, uh, included the administration of HPNAP during the phase of sensitization. What we observe is depicted here. At the end of the experiment, we compare, we evaluated the presence of eosinophils in the lung parenchyma, but also in the bronchoalveolar lavage. And as you can see here, this is a positive control. The animal has been administrated only with ovalbumin, there was a strong accumulation of eosinophils, which completely disappeared in HPNAP treated animals. And in agreement to, with these results, there was also the count of the cells in the bronchoalveolar lavage. Accordingly, we also found a significant decrease of the typical Th2 cytokines in the bronchoalveolar lavage. Based on these premises, we moved to the second protocol in which HPNAP was given after the phase of sensitization during the first two challenge with HPNAP. As before, we evaluated the same parameters and again, also the mucosal administration of HPNAP resulted in a significant reduction, disappearance of eosinophils from the lung parenchyma together with the total reduction of eosinophils in the bronchoalveolar lavage. And again, the Th2 cytokine were reduced. In this case, we measured also the level of IgE. Remember that IgE are the typical uh, immunoglobulin which are abundant in the allergic subject. And what we observed was that the mucosal administration of HPNAP resulted in the drop down of the level of IgE both in the serum and in the bronchoalveolar lavage. Therefore, we conclude that HPNAP, in virtue of its capacity to release, to promote the release of interleukin-12, is really capable to redirect TH2 cells responsible for the allergy towards the TH1 phenotype. But, <coughs> as I said before, Th1 cells are crucial also for their help in fighting tumours. The principal cells involved in killing cancer cells are obviously CD8 T cells, the so-called uh, cytotoxic T cells depicted here. But, it has been demonstrated several years ago that also Th1 cells, CD4 T cells, are essential for the activity of these killing cells. Therefore, we decided to evaluate whether HPNAP could be considered useful also in a possible therapy against cancer. And the, the idea came from the evidence that there is a particular kind of tumour that I will explain briefly now, which is a bladder cancer, which is treated with BCG, the bacillus of Calmet and Guerin. And BCG is very well known to be capable of inducing a strong Th1 response. But let me give you some details. Bladder cancer. 
Cancer of bladder is the fifth most common malignancy in Americans with more than 50,000 new cases yearly. Its frequency is increasing in industrialized country. And the Bacillus of Calmet-Guerin is the gold standard for superficial bladder cancer treatment in virtue of its Th1 polarizing activity. Therefore, the same activity that, um, than that of uh, HPNAP. What is BCG? The live attenuated BCG is a component of the vaccine for Mycobacterium tuberculosis associated disease and the induction of a localized TL per 1 and CD8 cytotoxic response is crucial in BCG activity. However, BCG treatment is associated with several side effects. Therefore, there is um, I mean, uh, a new protocol, a new therapeutic approach is required. So, could be, HP, a, could be HPNAP as a good, a good candidate for bladder cancer immunotherapy? To address this possibility, we started with a pilot experiment in which we injected um, subcutaneously on the flank of uh, mice um, bladder cancer cells. These animals were treated, were exposed, were implanted with these cells and for several times they were injected or not with HPNAP. We measure with the caliper the size, the volume of the tumour every day and we observed that at, uh, after 10 days there was a gap between the size, the volume of the two kinds of tumour, vehicle and HPNAP which increase with the time. And when we, at the end of the experiment, isolated the tumour, we observed a strong difference, not only in terms of dimension of the tumours, but also you can, you can clearly appreciate here the aspect. The HPNAP tumours were pale, whereas the vascularization was clearly evident in uh, um, vehicle exposed animals. And this is a crucial point. Accordingly, when we evaluated with a specific uh, antibody, antibody against the uh, endothelium, when we evaluated the distribution of vessels in the tumor of mice, of control mice, mm -hmm. and uh, in tumor of HPNAP exposed mice, we clearly um, we, we clearly um, uh, saw the difference in terms of uh, uh, vascularity. So HPNAP has an antiangiogenic activity and this is expected because if it is able to induce a strong Th1 response, it means that there is the production of interferon gamma and interferon gamma has an antiangiogenic effect. Accordingly, we found that HPNAP induced a strong recruitment of Th1 lymphocytes in the tumour and also of cytotoxic T cells in the tumour, but also in the lymph node, in the local lymph node. Obviously, there was no involvement of the contralateral lymph node. On the basis of these results, we decided to move to the bladder. And we adopted two experimental protocols. So we implanted the tumor cells directly in the cavity of the bladder, and we administrated to the animal HPNAP twice here, or for four times in the second protocol, which ended uh, at 13 days. What about the results? This is the result at the end of the short protocol. You can, see, you can clearly see that the major proportion of the bladder cavity is occupied by the tumour. But in the animal which were treated with HPNAP, the size of the tumour was really reduced. Was it delivered to the, to the bladder also? The, the with the catheter. It was not so easy. I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> that was the reason I was 
wondering mm. how mm. you have the And uh, uh, but when we moved, there is when we moved to the long protocol, the results were uh, even more interesting because you can see here the cavity of the bladder is totally occupied by the tumor, whereas the tumor in HPNAP treated animal was confined to the wall in the part of the bladder, not only, but also you can appreciate here the difference of vascularization. This is a uh, magnification of the uh, previous image and you can see here that in vehicle animals bladder cancer uh, showed an invasion of the fat tissue underlying the bladder wall whereas the tumor in HPNAP treated animals was confined within the bladder wall. Again evaluation of vascularization revealed the antiangiogenic activity of HPNAP due to uh, the interferon gamma induced. So we conclude that the local administration of HPNAP induces a strong T helper 1 and T cytotoxic response and this precedes the reduction of the tumor growth and inhibition of new vessel formation. I just want to conclude to give you, giving you a take-home message. HPNAP is an example of immunomodulating bacterial molecule, which, by acting on neutrophils and monocytes, induces the formation of an interleukin-12 enriched environment, which drives the differentiation of T cells towards the Th1 phenotype and its property opened the way to innovative therapies for the cure of allergic disorder and for bladder cancer. I just want to conclude with the name of the people who contribute to this uh, study, Gaia Codol and Fabio Munari in my lab, Matteo Fassane and Massimo Rugge for the um, uh, immunohistochemistry and uh, histopathological analysis of the tissue, Professor Tedesco and Fleur Bossi especially <laughs> for the contribution in all the project. My colleague Mario Milko Delius, which is, uh, um, who works in, in Florence and Amedeo Amedei. Professor Marco Casatella in Verona. Professor Berton in Verona for the um, uh, um, mouse model of uh, allergic asthma and Professor Francesco Bassi in uh, uh, Rome for, the, uh, for it, um, his contribution in the bladder cancer project. Thank you for your attention.